guys, I'm Melissa and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're having an awesome day so far. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you every single thing that I eat and drink in a day as a vegan who follows lower calorie density. And if you haven't watched any of my videos on this topic before, basically it means that you can eat until you're comfortably full without portion controlling or weighing or measuring your food because the foods that you're eating are so low in calories per pound of food. So every food that I eat, like all of the meals that I eat, if you pinpoint any of the ingredients, they are all under 700 calories per pound. So, you know, if you Google how many calories are in a pound of potatoes, you'll see that it's only 300 and something. How many calories in a pound of grapes? How many calories in a pound of rice? How many calories in a pound of oatmeal? So all of the food that I eat, if you were to weigh it per pound, it's all gonna equal less than 700 calories per pound. And the main reason for this low calorie density is because the foods contain a high level of fiber and a high level of water. All right, it is smoothie time and I'm gonna blend up a handful of dark leafy greens with some frozen bananas and some mixed berries. Normally I just use blueberries, but I got this berry medley that I'm gonna try out. And uh, I'm going to also throw in some cinnamon and a bit of soy milk and maybe some stevia as well. Alright, lots and lots of cinnamon because I love cinnamon. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, now I'm going to put about a third of a, a teaspoon of this super strong stevia that I use. It's very concentrated. Oh. All right, and adding in a bit of soy milk just gives it a bit more of a creamy consistency. I like to make my smoothies taste like milkshakes. All right, smoothies ready, and as you can see, it's nice and frothy and thick because I used frozen bananas. Delish. All right, so for lunch I'm gonna have lettuce wraps and the filling is gonna be my leftover rice bowl from yesterday. So I've already seasoned it yesterday and it's got lots of flavor in there. I just pulled out the ingredients so I can show you what is in there. Liquid smoke for a hickory flavor, which I love. Sriracha. A little bit of salt and I'll probably add a little bit more salt and pepper. Um, we've got onion powder in there. And then also pepper, garlic powder, and paprika. I'll probably add a little bit more spice as well. So I'm just gonna warm up this rice, and then I'm also gonna slice a Roma tomato and add that into the filling of the rice wraps. All right, so I've got my filling here, and I'm just gonna scoop it into the lettuce wraps. This is definitely a bit of a messy meal, but I'm here by myself eating lunch, so I've got no one to watch me make a total mess while I'm eating. Roma tomatoes are my absolute favorite. They're so flavorful and delicious, and I love them. All right, so I'm just gonna put a bit of garlic powder on these. Add even more flavor. So basically what I do is I just scoop them up, try to wrap them up as best I can. Obviously they're all different shapes and sizes, but that's okay. And then I just eat it like that. Yum, yum. All right, as a little snack, I'm gonna cut up a mango. These were only 33 cents at the grocery store, so of course, for that price, I had to grab a few. I guess they're in season right now. Perfect sweet little snack. And these also taste really good if you freeze them and then add them into your smoothie. 
All right, I'm gonna take some time to answer a few questions that I've received on the topic of calorie density and the way that I eat. And so the first thing is, do I do intermittent fasting? So basically what intermittent fasting is, is where you eat all of your meals during a shortened period of time. You have like a, a feeding window, usually eight hours. Some people do it in even less. So they're not necessarily reducing the amount of food that they're eating. They're just eating all of it within a certain window of time. And then for the rest of the time, the rest of the 24 hours in that day, they are fasting, usually drinking only water. So a lot of people will eat uh, from 12 till eight, and then they will go to bed and then not eat until 12 p.m. the next day. And that's essentially intermittent fasting. And it's basically giving your digestive system a break. Now, I basically do intermittent fasting by default. So I do not have an appetite when I first wake up in the morning. Like, I just don't feel like eating right away. I get up quite early, usually around 5 a.m., and I just don't feel like eating yet. I'm not hungry. The thought of making a meal right away when I've just woken up just doesn't appeal to me. So I kind of just wait until I'm hungry. Some days that will be 9.30, some days it will be almost noon because I have a lot of energy when I first wake up and I feel like I just want to get into the day, I get on my computer, I start working, I go for a long walk with my dog Beckham and you know I'm just not hungry yet so I wait for myself to get hungry and then I eat and I'm not a late night snacker because I don't stay up late like I naturally have always been a, a, an early riser and I get tired super early so at you know, nine o'clock, I find myself already wanting to get ready for bed. I usually go to bed between nine and 10.30. So I'm, by default, I'm also not eating late at night either, just because I'm not awake to be eating at night. So uh, I do recommend trying out intermittent fasting, but if it doesn't feel natural to you and you feel hungry at certain times, I'm a big believer in trusting your body and trusting your own instincts, especially if you're what you're wanting to eat is healthy. Like if it is earlier than you'd like to be eating or later than you'd be like to eat it, be eating, but you're craving something super healthy like a baked potato or a bowl of oatmeal or a salad or you wanna chop up some vegetables and eat that or eat some fruit, then I personally don't see anything wrong with that. I think if you are wanting to eat late at night and it's a bag of candies or a bag of cookies, then that's a totally different story. But I heard something along the lines of, if you're not hungry enough to eat an apple or eat a banana, then you're probably not hungry and you're just feeling like snacking and eating junk. But, And that was a long-winded roundabout way of me answering that question, so hopefully that made sense. All right, another question that I've gotten quite a few times is about Alex, my fiance, and people are asking, does Alex eat the exact same way that you do, or how do you guys manage that in your household? Are you always cooking separate meals, and you know, how does that all work? So the answer is yes and no. So a lot of the times Alex will eat the same things that I eat, like he loves all my smoothies that I make, um, and he likes oatmeal, but sometimes he will put peanut butter in his, which I don't eat peanut butter. Um, so he is like the least picky eater I've ever seen in my life. Like even sometimes he'll say like, oh, I don't like mushrooms or I don't like Brussels sprouts. But then we'll go out and those items are in a meal and he just eats it. I'm like, I thought you didn't like mushrooms. So he's just a really chill guy, very easygoing, and his food choices are also very uh, relaxed and he's just not picky. So that's really convenient. And so he hasn't eaten meat in about three years now, so we don't have any meat at home. He's not 100% vegan like I am. Like if we go out and there's a, a meal that contains some dairy, he will have that. Um, but as far as at home, like he has the same soy milk that I have. Um, and so most of the things that I have, he will also have. Um, trying to think of any exceptions. Like he does like the packaged fries, which have oil. So where you put the fries um, on a pan in the oven, he likes that. Whereas I will make my own fries without any oil. Um, and so there are a few exceptions, but almost all of it are things that are not tempting to me. So I don't find it like, 
I feel that if there was anything that I was like, I really can't have that in the house, it's so tempting to me and I really want that, that he would respect that and it wouldn't be an issue. I know it can be a challenge if you have very strong cravings for certain foods, like some people can't have chips in their house because if someone's eating chips next to them, they'll, they'll just be so tempted to also indulge in eating chips and then they've finished the whole bag before they know it. So it can be challenging living with other people who are not following the same healthy way of eating that you are um, and when it comes to that I recommend you know maybe asking them if they don't mind not having those items at home and indulging in those foods out of the house maybe when they're at work on their lunch break or before they come home whatever it may be um, but obviously every household dynamic and every relationship dynamic is a little bit different all right, now for a snack, I'm going to make a cucumber radicchio onion and tomato salad. As you can see if you've watched a few of my videos, I don't have salads all that often, but every once in a while, especially during the super warm summer months here in Arizona, I find that salads are quite refreshing, and so I'm gonna have one as a snack. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wash these ingredients, chop them up. When I have salads, I like to make sure that all of the veggies are chopped up very, very small. I just like it better that way because each bite of food gets uh, a little bit of each ingredient. All right, there we have all of our chopped up ingredients. Just gonna mix it all together really well. And for some flavor, I'm gonna add in some balsamic vinegar now. And as you can see, I do not add oil to my salads. If you're new to my channel, if you're new to calorie density, oil is almost 4,000 calories per pound. It is essentially the highest on the scale of calorie density. And so we are not gonna be adding oil to this, but I will add some garlic powder. and some and some pepper and a bit of salt super easy and there you go a super easy salad that takes about five minutes to make and talking about calorie density this is about a pound of food. So uh, because dark leafy greens and vegetables are very low in calorie density, this entire thing is maybe 250 calories, 300 calories, even though there's so much bulk there. A lot of it is fiber and water. Again, I don't recommend counting calories, but it's more just for your reference. It's sometimes nice to have a visual representation of what calorie density is all about. Now, if you were to drizzle olive oil, for example, all over this, you would literally triple the amount of calories in the same exact meal. For dinner, I'm going to make pasta with broccoli, and I'm gonna be using frozen broccoli, and I'm gonna season it with some garlic powder, chili powder, and crushed red pepper. I really like spicy pasta. And I'll add a little bit of salt and pepper as well. And then I've got uh, half a can of tomato sauce from the last time I made pasta. All right, and there you have it, a delicious pasta dish with lots of yummy broccoli. And I've added a ton of red pepper because I just like it nice and spicy. And I will say that if you are trying to lose weight, pasta is by no means the number one best food for that. Um, but I'm already at my ideal weight range, so every once in a while I will have pasta. And uh, there are certain other foods, like for example avocados that are higher in calorie density that um, are maybe not the best food to have every day if you are actively trying to lose weight following calorie density. Um, but as I said, I'm already at my ideal weight range and I'm not trying to lose any more weight, so I do have these foods in my diet sparingly. All right, I'm gonna go eat my pasta because I do not like cold pasta. I like it piping hot, so I'm gonna go enjoy this. All right, guys, that is it for me this evening. I am going to have a cup of black cherry berry tea and uh, add in a little bit of stevia. 
Sometimes I also make this into an iced tea, which is really refreshing. And if you like kombucha, I recommend adding in a bit of apple cider vinegar because it really gives it like a tangy flavor and it makes it kind of like uh, a do-it-yourself kombucha drink. I've also got a few book recommendations for you if you're wanting to learn more about calorie density, about weight loss, about everything that I speak about in these videos. These are four books that I've read that were very impactful for me and very informative and I do recommend them to anyone who wants to spend some time really getting a deeper understanding of calorie density and uh, of how this, how this all works. Alright, have a great day and I'll see you next time.